That's So I work from home for the most part. And here lately I've been experimenting with ways to focus my energy in short burst. One of the ways I've been practicing this is actually going to, as cliche as it is, coffee shops and for like an hour and a half to two hours and I will have a set amount of goals that I want to get done when I'm there that I break into like 40-ish minute segments and it's working pretty well. Like some people, this would probably be hard for to be out in public. They're, they would think there's more distractions. For me, it's actually kind of the opposite. I tend to just kind of zone in Whereas at home, there always seems to be like that distraction at times. The idea is I'm not going to go to keep going to coffee shops every day. That would just be way too expensive. Uh, it's more just to get my mind in the right frame so that when I am home, I'm better situated for those distractions. I have to run in Kroger's real quick. You don't care about that. So hang tight for a second. Okay, real quick before we get into today's video. We're a few days out from the shootout. I'm still going. I'm sorry, we're not a few days out. I'm losing my mind. We're a week and a half out. We're a few days out from me taking my Evo to the shop. So that's that update. It's going this Saturday. Today's Thursday. So it's going there Saturday. I am still going to the shootout next week. I'm probably going to go Sunday. Now, Enzo's definitely not going. The wife definitely can't go. I think I'd rather watch the races. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I like the car show portion. I like walking around, getting to meet people, and there's temperature is nicer you've got the grass there's the dino day you know I mean there's a lot of stuff going on on the other hand the race is the race you know it's fun to watch the race so I'm, I'm leaning more towards the Sunday event at this point especially if shoot at this point I might just be me by myself I don't know I wanted to have more videos up this week it's just been I've just been slammed with work stuff just 100% focused mindset on work right now and I've actually got like two videos partially done. I, it just gets pushed back. It just keeps getting pushed back. And I don't wanna just throw out content for the sake of content. So those are kind of my updates. The Evo's going in Saturday, and it's really all the information I have on that right now. I know it's gonna be a couple weeks. I will keep you guys updated on that. Any of you guys that are going to the shootout, definitely comment below. Let me know what days you're gonna be up there. I, if you don't know, I'm in the Cincinnati area. I'll be driving up that way. If there's any people like caravanning up, let me know. Maybe we can meet up and drive together. Since Enzo's not going, I'll probably be in the ST, so not quite as cool as being in an Evo, but at least it'll be decently fast and a fun little drive, I suppose. I think that'll, that won't technically be my first road trip in the Focus, but, oh, shell. Okay, I seriously doubt the mic's picking that up, but basically that shirtless fellow back there is talking to what I sadly assume is his daughter, because why wouldn't he procreate? about how he chose probation over the five years in jail and that's why that was a better decision and she agreed. <sighs> why isn't he wearing a shirt? <sighs> Anyways, this is my rant for today. You guys, you gotta stop buying or wanting to buy Evos with built motors or internal motor mods. <sighs> I get this all the time. People send me these Evos. Do you think this is a good car to buy? Do you think this is a good car to buy? And buying a used car is a gamble. I mean, really, buying any car is kind of a gamble. I mean, yeah, sure, new cars come with warranties, but there's still gambling involved there. I mean, you could total it. You know, they lose a lot of depreciation, so it's weighing pros and cons of how long you're going to keep it. Yeah, sure, I mean, there's things you can do like gap insurance, but then you buy gap insurance and you don't total it, and then you just spend even more money. And what if you buy gap insurance on every car you buy? And then, so, I mean, there's always... You gotta find that balance. And if I had a spectrum of safe versus dangerous when it comes to buying a used car, specifically a used Evo, one to 10, internal motor mods, nine and a half. Definitely nine and a half. As somebody who's bought multiple Evos and is comfortable with owning a modded Evo, who has owned Evos with internal motor mods, I can tell you that there is no way, well, I shouldn't say no way, there is almost no way that I will buy an Evo with internal motor mods. If this is your first Evo, 
I know a lot of these guys are younger, you know, it's not like you're sending me your age, but a lot of times you, you can just kind of tell. Plus I have my analytics from Google, so I know like kind of where my target audience is. So I, I get that, you know, I remember being that age and my first car had a ton of motor mods and it was a terrible idea. I remember I thought it was a great idea and it was a good price. It wasn't a bad car, but I think I was happier the day I sold that car than the day I got it. Well, between gas and my uh, parking ticket, I'm damn near close to $100 today. This is a fun little uh, work trip. Oh, you know what, though? I am going to save that ticket because that is totally tax deductible, pretty sure. I don't know. I'll send it to my account. It's $25. I'm not that concerned about it. I doubt I'm going to get audited over a $25 ticket. Anyways, here's the thing. A car is thousands of parts that have to work together. I wouldn't say perfectly, but within a reasonable margin of error for the car to be reliable. I trust Mitsubishi to do very little things right. They killed the Evo. They rebooted the Eclipse as a crossover. That is one nice 911. Um, they rebooted the Eclipse. Not to mention all, I don't know if you guys follow, but like Mitsubishi corporate has done like some shady stuff in Japan. Like that's part of the reason they had to be sold and all sorts of weird stuff. But one of the few things I actually trust Mitsubishi on is knowing how to put together a motor, specifically when it comes to the 4G63s and even the 4B11s. They might not do a lot of things right, but damn it, they can build a motor. The problem is when you start talking internal mods, even for somebody who's relatively mechanically inclined, that's hard to know if everything's right. Sure, you can do a compression test and see if everything seems to be functioning. There's some other tests you can do, but there's nothing to tell you if something is just, just a little bit off, just a little bit off. That's the part that scares me. The 4G63s and to maybe a slightly lesser extent, the 4B11s, they're super robust motors. They can take a lot of abuse. It's one of the reasons Evos are better to mod than like Subarus. Subarus, if you mod something and you are off by a percent, it, the whole motor just commits suicide. Evos, they just go like, hey, dumbass, like this isn't correct, but whatever, I'm still gonna make 400 horsepower for you and we're still gonna beat the crap out of this Subaru. But you know, if you do this right, we'll be even better off and we'll last even longer. But they, they keep their mouth shut and they keep going. One of the reasons that I'm taking the head off my car is because to be 100% certain that there's no lower motor damage, that's what we need to do. We could be like 90 plus, 95% certain there was no motor damage without taking the head off, but then something may go wrong down the road. So it's like, you know what, screw it. Let's just take it off and find out now. And that's the problem with internal motor problems is things can be really close, buddy. This is a bad idea. Wow, they're doing like a pothole fill on a curb no signs, no flaggers. Are they just trying to get somebody killed? There's so many little microscopic things that could be wrong that won't show up right away. I've said this in some other videos, but let me make this perfectly clear. There is a handful of Evo shops. Shops that, they don't have to do nothing but Evos, but Evos are definitely one of their specialties. Busher Racing, STM, English, All Wheel Drive. Um, I know there's some other ones. AMS, just to name a few. If you can show me receipts where they did all the internal motor work and they did the tuning, sure, I have no problem with it. So, just unloaded the car, I kinda lost track, but <clears throat> if you got receipts from a shop, well, hi buddy. If you got receipts from a reputable Evo shop, great, like I'm all ears. It's when it's just another shop, like a machine shop or a shop that specializes in Mustangs or Corvettes or something. It's not that these people don't know what they're doing. Not that at all. I'm sure plenty of them can do a fine job. The issue is your the risk to reward. First, be completely honest with yourself. And this is so hard. I know every time somebody goes to buy an Evo, it's, I'm going to have 700 horsepower. I will tell you, having ridden in a lot of these crazy horsepower cars, not a lot, but I've ridden in a few, and I've talked to several people who own these, they're not that fun. And people either sell them or they go to a smaller turbo because the lag is just terrible. 
it's not fun to have seven, 800 horsepower and know that you can beat every car out there but damn it, that minivan's gonna beat you at the red light. If you're really honest with yourself, I think the first thing you'll realize is you don't need a built motor. You don't need internal motor mods. Maybe some head work, sure, but you really don't need a built lower end. Even if somebody's got a good deal on a built motor Evo, if you don't need it, it's not a good deal. You know, I saw a good deal on a Lamborghini, but aside from the fact I can't afford a Lamborghini, I also don't need a Lamborghini, it's not a good deal. You know, if you don't need it or can't afford it, well, it's not a good deal. It doesn't matter how quote unquote good of a deal it is. So first, be honest with yourself. Second, what you have to realize is, and the best example I can give of this, when my clutch went out in my first Evo 9, this was, I don't have my Evo, not that long. So this is my first experience on how bad the stock clutch was. Mitsubishi, I think, and I'm going off memory here, and this was many years ago, but a new clutch, with labor for an OEM clutch, it's like $1,500 or something. And I called around and Busher quoted me the labor price of like half. And I even asked them, I said, you know, how is it that you're half of what even Mitsubishi can do it for? And the answer was simple is they do a lot more of them, they're faster at it. And it, it made sense, a lot of people Plenty of people don't take their cars to the dealer, but a lot of, I think, specialty, the more special the car is, I think you'll find a lot of GTR owners don't take their car to Nissan. And it's the same kind of thing with the Evo. A lot of Evo owners take their cars to Evo shops. And they were able to do it for cheaper because they could do it so much faster. Because they do it all the time. And that's the thing with these shops that are specializing in Evos or at least do a lot of Evos is that they're familiar with the cars, they're less likely to make a mistake. They also know the intricate ins and outs. And I'm not an engine builder and I don't pretend to be, but I, I can imagine that working on a Corvette and working on an Evo are two very different experiences, aside from the obvious like overhead cams versus the push rod. There's just gonna be little intricate things that, you know, after they've done it so many times, I realize, you know what? If we do this, it works out better. If we do it this way versus that way. Whereas a shop that, maybe has never worked on an Evo, or maybe they've worked on one or two, there's more likely of a chance that something's gonna go wrong. So looking at our risk reward scale, if we're honest with ourselves and we already know that a built motor really isn't something we probably need, and then we also look at the fact that this was either done by an unknown shop or the person themselves, that's the scariest of all. I mean, we're at, we're at a 10 as far as risk goes, as far as my concern. If I'm looking to buy an Evo and I see built motor or internal motor mods and they list some shop that I've never heard of, some local machine shop, or they, like I said, worst case, they list that they themselves did it. They got pictures of them putting it together and all the parts are on the garage floor. Oh my gosh, I don't even care what the price is anymore. I, I'm just not interested. Maybe if they're desperate and they wanna sell it to me for five grand for the entire car, sure, because in my mind, I'm already factoring in a complete motor rebuild. The thing you have to realize too is, a lot of times if something goes wrong with your motor and like for example, my motor, if it turns out that I have to rebuild my motor, that's costly. But if somebody was to rebuild it who didn't know what they were doing, they could actually do even more damage. You know, the way it sits right now, my block is still gonna be fine. Um, sure, I may need to rebuild it, but there's not gonna be anything catastrophic damage that like I don't have a good core anymore or my crank is bad or anything like that when people start doing this stuff themselves who knows what you could run into and a lot of these prices they assume that you have good cores let me get the sleepies you can act like you hate it but you wouldn't stay here if you didn't at least tolerate it all gone see that wasn't so bad oh thank you so then let's look at it at the other perspective. Let's say that you are the person that is actually going to follow through with some crazy horsepower car. You're gonna track it, you're gonna do whatever. I would still do it right the first time. Find a car that has no internal motor mods. I know it's getting harder to find Evos with no mods, but it's not that hard to find ones that have no signs of internal motor mods, especially like the lower end and stuff. And as expensive as it can be to build a race car, even you know just for yourself, for these weekend racers and stuff, I don't know a lot about that, but I do know that it's cheaper to do it right the first time. Everything in life is always cheaper to do it right the first time.
So there you have it. That's my rant for today. I hope you guys get some value out of this. If you have any specific questions, definitely comment below. If you bought a car with motor mods, internal motor mods, and had a good or bad experience, comment below, let us know, let me know what, what your experience has been. If you've got any questions about myself, about Enzo here, about my Evo, which, oh, the lights are all off right now, but I'm partway through the paint correction right now, so it's looking pretty good. I've tried to get some some video and photo angles and just the white with the amount of light I have, it just doesn't really come out that well, so I've pretty much just given up and I'm just gonna finish it and not really worry about displaying it. But if you have any questions about that, like I said, that'll be going to the shop this weekend. Today is Thursday, so I gotta get this done today and tomorrow to have it done by Saturday morning. Um, definitely comment below. Other than that, if you guys are gonna be at the shootout, definitely let me know. Social media links are below. Instagram's the best. Um, but there's Facebook and Twitter as well. Other than that, appreciate you guys watching the videos. Like if that's your thing. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys in the next video. Buddy, say bye. Say bye-bye.